again, quarantined yet another day. This time we got Vic Diaz from Emory Riddle. How are you, man? Doing well, man. Trying to deal with all this madness like everyone else is, but uh, everybody's in the same boat. So, you know, that's a, that gives us a little hope right now. So where is Emory Riddle for everybody who doesn't know about it? Emory Riddle is in Daytona Beach, Florida. It's uh, right, I mean, two miles, three, about two to four miles from the beach. Okay, and it's uh, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Um, so that makes me think, do I have to study airplanes if I go there? Um, that's something that we try to get out of the room, uh, kind of like the elephant in the room with every recruit we talk to. And, and so, you know, that's a good question. So we tell guys that you don't have to study aeronautical. You don't have to be a pilot. You know, a high percentage of our team is in business or engineering. Uh, Homeland Security is also a big degree at our school. Uh, believe it or not, we've only had this past season about five guys that were doing anything in flight and 16 guys on our team were in business and then the rest varied from engineering and Homeland. So you don't have to study it. We offer a lot of majors. So that's the one elephant we try to get out of the room right away because everybody thinks they need to become a pilot. But it is a great career to go into. I will say that. No doubt. Um, and I know it's a great school. I definitely want other people to hear about it. Jumping to the baseball side of things, pretty darn good baseball program as well. Give us a little bit about the history, and then we'll talk about this year in just a second. Yeah, Embry-Riddle, uh, the program itself is, is unbelievable. I mean, if you look back at from when the program started to where we are now and, and see the accomplishment this, this program has, obviously I've only been here for two seasons. I'm going obviously going on my third now. But um, – the program itself, you know, they went to 13 NAI College World Series, top five in the country all those years, have had some great coaches here, uh, great players come out of here, over 30 guys either drafted or signed, um, and two guys currently in the big leagues. You know, and then 2016 is when Embry-Riddle baseball program and athletics made the jump to the NCAA level. Um, at that point, we, you know, there was a two-year two postseason ineligibility uh, uh, ban. So we weren't eligible for the postseason. And then in just our second season in 2019 of being postseason eligible, we did make a regional um, and being eligible again this year, we were hoping to do the same thing. But, uh, you know, that's kind of where the program has been um, and, and where it's going. But there's a lot of tradition, a lot of great players, a lot of great coaches here. Uh, there's been a lot of continuity with Coach Stiegel, who, who's been here for 15 years, and then Coach Gwilliam, who was here uh, prior to that. Uh, he's now at Valdosta State. So. You guys, you guys were ranked when the season got cut short. I believe what was it, number thirteen, and that was the highest NCAA ranking that Amber Riddles ever had. Correct? Yeah, yeah. So in in just our short time in NCAA, we were ranked thirteenth this season, uh, and it was you know that some of those times it gets a little premature, but it's good to see where the program can go and the direction it can go. It's early in the season. You never know what can happen, but it's good to see. It gives our guys something to continue to work for, but uh, that is the highest we've been ranked at the NCAA level. That's good stuff, man. And uh, I know some of that has to do with, with your pitching staff, right? I mean, the ball starts in their hands. So uh, as the pitching coach, what is, you know, maybe the one thing that you preach on most with these guys? Uh, as a pitching coach for me, the, the number one thing is be yourself. You know, it, you know we all have these innate, uh, character traits that we just have to be natural with and, and be ourselves when we take it to the mound. So I tell our guys, be yourself. Don't feel like you have to do anything more or anything less. Be who you are and try to make the most of that. And to go with that, we talk about how much can we bridge the gap from the bullpen, our side work, practice to the game. You know, we, we believe in all the spin rate. We believe in all that stuff. But I think there's a still uh, the game factor. Um, that's a human element that you can't take away. It's how we're adapting in game. You know, is this guy sitting on a different pitch than his last at bat? How do I know that? What am I looking for? Am I reading his swings? If my fastball is missing, how, what adjustment am I making over the mound? You know, so we talk about that. And when I sit in the bullpen with them uh, prior to the game, uh, you know, with the starter, I'm talking, I always talk about him to getting to the next pitch. You know, if he misses glove side, how am I getting to the next pitch? Because that's what we're going to have to do in a game. We can't just keep peppering the glove side. Oh, I need to get there before I can do that. We just got to get to the next pitch and keep trying to bridge that gap. Right. Love it. So working on the bullpen uh, and, and bridging the gap from the bullpen to the game. Uh, is That's yeah. good stuff. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, so I'm, I'm from South Florida. You and I met down there, obviously. Um, 
Division two baseball, I, baseball in general in Florida is on another planet. Um, how good is the Sunshine State Conference? I mean, it, it's, it's really good. There's so much parity up and down the conference. Um, and coming from having the opportunity to play in the SEC um, and also playing Conference USA as a player and coaching Conference USA, USA as a player, um, you know, you can see a lot of flashes of, of what it looks like. And, and I think there's a lot of, a lot of uh, similarities in how it is. And you're going to face really good arms. You're going to face some really good hitters. I mean, the conference itself, the past five years, has had 17 to 18 guys drafted a year. Um, so I think that tells you how good it is uh, and where the conference stands. But it, there's so much parity in it. You never know who's going to come out. Of, obviously, Tampa does their thing. Um, but as far as how the past two seasons, how the conference has been going, uh, there's been a lot of parity. No doubt. I've seen Flagler, obviously Florida Southern, Tampa, you guys jumping up in there, um, you know, Nova Southeastern over the years. And Rollins has been doing well. And it's wild how, how really, really good. It always kills me when coming from Florida where guys are like, oh, you know, I can't, I can't play at the D1s in state. Well, then let me look at a D2. And I'm like, good luck, man. <laughs> good yeah, luck. Yeah, and I mean, and if you look around all the teams and, and on the field, you're going to see – a lot of guys who did go Division One who are now playing uh, at our level. You know, we've got guys on our team. Everybody else does too. And then you'll see a lot of high-level JUCO guys. Um, no doubt. But it's, it's fun to watch because, it, you know, you're in the state of Florida where recruiting is unbelievable, and then, you have, and then you're playing against these really good teams. So, yeah, you know, I'm all for you mentioned high level Yeah, you, you mentioned JUCO. I'd say that – Florida junior college baseball is basically like rookie ball of, of pro baseball. It's like the start of pro baseball. Yeah, me. it's pretty, it's pretty good. And I've had an, uh, an opportunity to play junior college ball down here. You know, after I transferred to Miss from Mississippi state, I went to Manatee um, and played and we had a lot of good players on our team. And I mean, it was just unbelievable. I was impressed the whole way around. And I've always known, I remember when I was a kid, I always told my parents, I'm from New Jersey originally. I always told my parents I wanted to move to Florida whenever it rained up there. Um, but I never realized it rains a lot more here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but uh, it's it, – I played with a lot of good players down here, and, you know, a lot – some of them are in pro ball, some of them are in coaching now, but there's talent all over the board in the, at the JUCO level here for sure. Well, you're doing a great job, man. Uh, handled yourself well like a pro here today, my man. I'm hey, gonna... <laughs> I'm just here for you, Josh. You've, nah, you've been doing a good job. Nah for uh, the coaching community, man, and we really appreciate what you're doing. We made this look good. We made this look really professional. That is, you know, hey, this is good right here. That, that's what people need to think, right? No doubt, man. Well, hey, be safe. I know you got some things coming up in your own personal life that are exciting, so take care of the family, uh, and I will hopefully see you this summer, man. Absolutely. Josh, I appreciate you and everything you're doing for the coaching community and all the players, man. Thank you.